Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. I've got a couple of cool guitars to go over tonight. Starting with this one by Reuse Guitars in Hong Kong, Hong Kong. So at first, this thing kind of catches your eye. It makes me think of like the Slash collection. You know, like the Vermilion Burst here because you get the uncovered pickups. It's a bursted color with something that you don't normally see on a Gibson. This one, maybe not as much of a burst, but you know, still a nice dark color. I could see Slash repping something like this in the future. But it appears to have been built to historic specs with a Gibson ABR1 bridge, probably a lightweight aluminum tailpiece. But the black plastics really look good on this custom shop guitar. But that super dark blue, it's, it reminds me of an ocean. Certain areas are darker than others, and I bet that flame figuring looks great in person. But then, whoa! <laughs> Something's hopping out of the water at ya! A skull! Aw oh, man, that's actually kinda cool. We've actually covered Gibson skull guitars once before, this Would You Rock or Not episode. So there's been multiple guitars that have had a skull-like finish, and they just airbrush it over. It's usually a super limited edition finish, but this is the first one that's kind of like slash snake pit vibes. Now, it's not a relief carving or anything, at least I don't think it is. But it works really well with the whole vibe of this guitar that I just wanted to share it because unless you know it's there, it doesn't necessarily pop out at you. It's either that or this giant watermark on this photo <laughs> makes it hard to see. But you know, just from here, it looks great. It doesn't even look like this thing came out of the factory with a pick guard or anything. And that's some nice aged nickel hardware. So fantastic, kind of a cool idea. I guess it looks a little bit cheesy from this angle, but this guy takes some nice photos. I really like that fretboard. It looks like somebody, did somebody play it enough to have to have it refretted? It's either that or you just can't quite see the fret nibs. I might be able to see them there. Now, I'm not sure if that's legit or not. Somebody might have added that, but the rest of the headstock's looking okay. It appears it was actually played. It's either that or that's just reflecting lights. But this one was made around 2009 at the Gibson Custom Shop. The back just appears to be black. Here you can definitely see some play wear, so somebody must have played this a lot over in Hong Kong. And this one is listed at $3,490 plus $200 shipping. That's not too bad to get it from Hong Kong. It's a regular Custom Shop standard, usually anywhere between like thirty-two to 4000 or so. So it really is fairly priced if you like that. I would suggest picking that thing up. But before we continue on with our guitar hunting journey tonight, let's hear a word from our sponsor. The sponsor for today's episode is Magic Spoon, the keto-friendly, gluten-grain, and soy-free, low-carb cereal. If you're like me and loved eating cereal as a child, but later grew disgusted with how bad some of your favorites can actually be for you, you might have found yourself curious about this product too when seeing advertisements for it online. So they sent us four flavors to check out today, but they have eight core models and usually a limited edition flavor available direct on their website in one-time purchases or subscription-based savings plans. With zero gram sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, only four net grams of carbs, and 140 calories per serving. Let's give these flavors a try. Mm. After careful consideration, fruity was my favorite of these four flavors. Second place goes to frosted. That one had a great vanilla taste. But hey, if you don't really care about the whole sugar aspect, these things make great crispy treats too. If you're looking for something tasty and high protein to give your kids lots of energy. If you'd like to try some yourself, you can visit their website using my special link in the description. And be sure to use promo code TROGLY at checkout to get $5 off any order, which is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. And hey, if you need this in a new grab-and-go format, they have a limited edition cereal bar variation available as well. You can check that out on their website. Look at this prickly thing. <laughs> this is one of those dumb guitars that I would own just because it's funny. The Gibson Custom Shop Art and Historic Les Paul P90 Rick Garcia Cactus. Now, I'm assuming Rick Garcia is the one who did the paint job. It's, it's a cactus. What else do you want me to say? Good night. Now, it's just got some light green right here, and then it kind of gets darker to kind of show you that, like, the sun is shining directly onto there, give you some depth. But I feel like this could have been done better. Could it not have? 
like maybe get it more slightly realistic instead of just being this light color actually try to give it some texture that was probably way more effort than somebody wanted to put in for a cactus lost ball i could see myself custom ordering something silly like this but i really like how it gets super bright right here and that they've modeled this after an r6 so we get two p90 pickups likely chosen that way it's not like eating up the entire face of the guitar you can see more of that pure cactus goodness but check those knobs out. I love the cream knobs. That works great with these. And you know, maybe I need to take my comments back earlier. Those spikes, they almost look 3D at this angle. So maybe it's just one of those things that you gotta look at it just the right way for it to really speak to you. I'm sure somebody that lives in Arizona or anywhere else where they might have cacti around, they might be interested in adding this Lost Paul to their collection. But my friends, the fun does not stop here. The fretboard, it's regular, but the headstock is also a cactus. <laughs> it's a nice little touch to have a matching headstock on this. The spikes don't quite look as good from this angle. It definitely has that historic high truss rod cover thing going on. I feel they should have did like custom tuner tips that have like a little cactus guy on it that's smiling at you. <laughs> There would be ways to make this thing even pricklier. But what does the back look like? I have not seen this before. So potentially 2003. Man, Gibson just did weird stuff in the 2000s, and that's why I like it. But the back, it's just plain. Okay, I can dig that. I think they could have went as far as like making it a dusty sand type thing. But I can also respect the choice to leave it bare and natural. And hey, it's got the original case as well as the certificate of authenticity. The cactus really reminds me of the dude Les Paul. You know, this guy right here that had the jalapeno peppers. <laughs> yeah, check that episode out. That was great. I wish I could have got that guitar. Next up here in my searches, hey, this guy came back. The Beck Mongolian Chop Squad that somebody just happened to, you know, modify to look like it would have been shot just like in the anime. So I think this is actually the exact same guitar that somebody bought over in Japan because I've actually already done a video on this. So if you want more details as to why there's seven holes in this guitar and learn the story about Lucille, I did that about a year ago. Now, I'm not sure if this was the exact same one in that video, but I remember this guitar being for sale in Japan. I think it was about 1500 bucks, and I thought it was an okay price. And then this guy bought it. He's had it probably about a year and now he's selling it, but he has it listed at 2500 bucks. And honestly, I think that's about right. But hey, 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 wait a minute. I would really like to see Gibson make this a real custom shop thing where they do this. And since they're starting to get into the anime guitars like we saw on the Argo Novice review, hey, maybe this will happen one day. But this was like an early 2000s Les Paul standard. They also kind of aged the neck a little bit. I think that looks way too cheesy and not good. Like they probably went too far that it now affects playability. However, if you want to check out this guy's demo, it actually sounds pretty good. So what's his asking price? 2,500 bucks. If you're a big Beck fan, you might pay that much, but hopefully, just hopefully, one day we will see that custom shop limited edition. That will be one for the ages. And then lastly, a real Gibson Flying V from 1958 showed up by Rudy's Music in New York. Original Flying Vs are so rare, and I always said, if I ever get to the point where I can actually afford a burst, I probably actually wouldn't want it. I would rather have an original V or an Explorer. And I rationalize that decision a lot because of rarity. If you want an original Flying V or an Explorer, you're gonna have to know a guy because these things don't show up to the open market as often as a burst. Like say, I want a burst tonight, I can go to Reverb and I can buy one. The pickings have been slim lately, but I don't think I've ever seen a legit 50s Explorer ever show up on Reverb. Those are usually all private sales because they're a little bit more unique simply because absolutely nobody wanted these originally. I mean, the Les Pauls weren't all that popular either, but these things became iconic in the 70s and 80s. So to be able to get one of the original ones, I think it's cooler for somebody to have an original V or Explorer in their collection rather than a burst. But let's face it, most of the super rich, they'll, they'll have one of each anyways. But if I was gonna get one first, unless it just happened to be a super flame top burst, I would probably go with something like this. But the Explorer would be my number one favorite. 
But this photo, man, that finisher's all checked, but what is going on with the intonation on this thing? I, I doubt that's right. But it does say it's been completely checked through and fully set up by their in-house luthiers. I would be surprised if the intonation is correct on that. But at the end of the day, if this is what they're saying it is, an original flying V. Doesn't get any cooler than that, folks. But how much is this expensive piece of Gibson history with a beautifully aged headstock and a serial number that dates it to 1958? Let's find out. Whoa, $425,000. That's right. It's more expensive than a burst. Considerably more expensive. And even though it doesn't have the flame top and stuff, it's just a little bit more cooler in my opinion. So let me know down in the comment section, if you won the lottery, which would you buy? Would you get an original Explorer, Flying V, or Les Paul? Let me know down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.